Hi there, Linda Behrens here. Uh, recently, I've been getting questions about how is it does the Myers-Briggs and the four-letter type code relate to temperament, and why did David Kersey um, select those letters to match up, and, and what's the story behind that? So old as I am, and having studied with David Kersey a long time ago, uh, and for him as my mentor, I asked him some questions about it, and it turns out that what, what happened was he had observed these patterns as he studied personality descriptions that way back in the 1990s, I'm sorry, the 19th century in the 1920s, when it uh, seemed like personality type was really popular. And a lot of great thinkers were writing about it, it turns out. And he saw that these descriptions went back centuries, centuries, centuries. And the same pattern seemed to be described, but given different names. And he, he said, I said to him, you know, you were so bright to think of this. And he said, no, I'm just a fitter. I just fit them all together. And, and so he, he looked at all of these, came up with some descriptions. And along that time, he was, and, and met Isabel Myers. He took the Myers-Briggs type indicator and it came out INTP, and he read the description as like, this woman's been following me around. So he was quite impressed with the, the Myers-Briggs and, and, the, and the connections that uh, Isabel Myers had made in the descriptions. So he looked at that and said, how, how do these four temperaments, four patterns that I've been observing match the, the descriptions that Isabel Myers has, has come up with and these, these descriptions here? So, you know, by this time, the Myers-Briggs type indicator had, hadn't really taken off, um, but it was beginning to build in, in popularity. And so it, it turns out that it's really a match of patterns. And so I'm, I wanna share with you today the way those patterns match. Now, when you dive deep into cognitive dynamics, like we do in our courses, um, we can start to see how it makes sense logically. And for some of us, like me, we want to see what's the logical connection. But sometimes we just have to take it on faith that it's a match of patterns. And this has now been used for a long time. And I've not found any instances in which the, the, the relationships I'm going to show you to the type code haven't made sense. Well, there are the four essential motivator patterns, catalyst, theorist, improviser, and stabilizer. Those are four patterns that, that we've identified and we refer to by these names. So David Kersey came up with, with different names and we chose these names because we found that idealist, there was some bias in the business world about having an idealist, you need realist in order to make money, um, to run a business. Um, he called the stabilizer the guardian, and that that was that worked pretty well. Um, improviser he called artisan, and artisan kept being mistaken for, uh, you know, the bricklayer. Doesn't talk about the other kinds of artisanship. So theorist he called the rational, and of course a lot of people would re relate to rational. They want to be rational. So we, we decided to name change the names. Then about the same time, we decided that we would differentiate it from Kersey's approach to temperament and call it essential motivators, because this is the kind of information that this lens brings. It, it, it tells us what are our deep psychological needs. But for now, we're just going to focus on and that matches to the type code, which in some ways a little bit mechanical. So if we look at the essential motivators and the preference for abstract language, catalyst and theorist share that preference. And that shows up in the type code with an N standing for intuition or intuiting. So catalyst and theorists prefer abstract language. Intuiting is often about uh, things that are uh, less tangible that are abstract. So uh, concrete language as a preference shows up with the stabilizer and improvisers tend to use concrete language, meaning they're referencing tangible things. 
in a way that you can see it, taste it, smell it. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't be conceptual. It just means that the way they talk about them is pretty tangible, pretty easy to see. And that shows up as a, an S in the type code. So stabilizer and improviser all share a sensing preference. Now, what about the others? So a catalyst and stabilizer share the kinds of roles that they tend to take with others are affiliative. Now, affiliative roles means that you want to check in with others or with the norms and, and sort of to get their buy-in. And those show up as the, in, the, in the type code as N and F or S and J. So catalyst with the four INFJ, ENFJ, INFP, ENFP, those four types tend to take affiliative roles using abstract language, referencing abstract language. The stabilizer pattern has an S and a J in it. And so they tend to prefer sensing, but the J tells us that that sensing is introverted. It's, it, it's how we reference what's gone before and have an internal sense. So the four type codes that go with stabilizer are ISTJ, ISFJ, ESTJ, and ESFJ. So all four of those have a stabilizer pattern and they all prefer introverted sensing using cognitive dynamics. When David Kersey did it, he wasn't referring to the cognitive dynamics. He just noticed that these patterns are the ones that fit. He didn't get into the, the cognitive dynamics aspect or the, the eight function model. Okay, the other kind of roles that you, know, you can take kind of opposite affiliative are pragmatic. And pragmatic roles um, are about calling the shots on your own actions, um, making independent, taking independent action, doing uh, what you think will work. Not pragmatic in the sense of practical, but what, what is gonna work? So people with a preference of N and T, the theorist, have a preference for prag taking pragmatic roles. So all of those with an intuitive, in a preference for intuition and thinking tend to um, approach relationships and work in a pragmatic way, not a kind of independent, um, pragmatic, so INTJ, INTP, ENTJ, and ENTP. So we have N and T, those four types. We'll cluster around this. The other essential motivator pattern of improviser is that's also take pragmatic roles. And that's the improviser then with S and P in their type code. And so it's ESG, ISTP, ESTP, ESFP, and ISFP. And so those with S and P in their type code uh, share these pragmatic roles. If we look at this and we look at uh, cognitive dynamics, we can, it, it kind of, it makes sense to me. There is a logic to it that isn't necessarily parallel construction, but it is a logic. So S and P with cognitive dynamics means that people have a preference for extroverted sensing, which is tuning in to the needs of the moment. And those with an improviser pattern are very tuned in to what's going on right now. And then there's a drive to act on whatever that is that's going on now. Whereas the, the, the stabilizer, their preference for sensing is introverted and introverted sensing is, is, is what brings stability because you can reference what's gone easily, reference what's gone before and what's going to last and, and, and stabilize the situation. So we can have four variations of that. For the catalyst, if, if what is important to you, your core psychological need is deep meaning and significance, intuition and feeling, doesn't matter whether it's extroverted or introverted, will be the best means to get you that. It will, it will bring to you some understandings of motivations and um, what is really of value to people and what will help you connect with people. In other words, introverted feeling, extroverted feeling. Um, introverted intuiting and extroverted intuiting, doesn't matter. 
And the theorist with preferences for N and T, it's, it's about understanding the logic of things and, and understanding um, how models and frameworks and um, having systems that you can articulate. So to really explain and understand the world through theories. And does it matter if it's introverted intuiting or extroverted intuiting or introverted thinking or extroverted thinking? Those are differences in among those types, which we'll get to at some point here. But to re understand that, that, that those are the two functions in the type code that enable someone to really understand the, the theories behind things, the logic and the reasoning. So I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more about those connections between the union basis of personality type, how David Kersey matched the patterns. He did not use the logic of the union model. In fact, he kind of didn't like it. He thought it was parts, not whole systems. Um, but, but the patterns match. And if you dive deeper into cognitive dynamics, in, as we do in our courses, you can see more easily what those uh, patterns, how those relate to the essential motivator patterns or the temperament patterns. So I hope this has been helpful and you have a little bit more of an understanding of how these really are not temperament and essential motivators was not constructed from an understanding of Jung. It doesn't have Jungian foundations, but it is so brilliant in the way that it relates to a deeper understanding of the way we think about things, which is cognitive dynamics. So that's all for now. It's one lens at a time related to another lens. And a little bit later, we'll get to some other lenses and how those relate. So thank you for joining me.